Hey there everyone, Chris Mack here, and today I want to talk about some stuff that I have in my truck. Not everything that I have in my truck, that would be a really long video. My wife and I have uh, two dogs, and because of that, uh, we have some specific things in our vehicles for that. One being the seat cover. Now what I like about this seat cover is a lot of different things. One, it is extremely budget friendly. I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks, and I've had this thing for probably about four or five years now and it is held up fairly well. I mean, there are a few things that I did to it to make it a little bit more efficient. I do have one complaint about it and I'll show you that here in a second. But some of the things I do like is it clips in and out very easily. It's washable. I've put this in the washing machine at least a half a dozen times. It vacuums up pretty well. And also it's actually kind of like a dog hair magnet. So a lot of the dog hair that is in the truck sticks to it rather than blowing around, which I find to be a good thing. Um, another good thing about this is that it provides protection. When it comes to criminals, they're usually creatures of opportunity. So it's one of those, they'll go and check the door. And if it's not locked, then that's why they break in. Not necessarily that they're wanting to break into something. That being said, you, this also provides some visual protection as well. So I don't have a truck gun because I don't want someone to break into my truck and steal it and then my firearm being used in criminal activity. So that being said, if I, when I do go to the range and I take my rifle, I'm able to slide this up in here and let's say I have to stop and get gas or stop and grab groceries on the way home. It's this dog cover prevents cover from everything that I have on my back floorboards. So that way it provides a little bit of like, oh, there's nothing there, it's a dog car kind of a thing. So it just is a little bit of camouflage, I guess you could say. Now, one of the things I didn't like about it is that it would always pull up from the back. So I got this bungee cord and I ran it through the seat belt loops and one long stretch down and that keeps the wind from blowing around whenever it's just me in the truck and I don't have the dogs holding this in place. And then another idea I added was having some paracord tied down through, and this actually goes to the frame. I actually have the paracord going down to the child safety seat belt locks. So that way the dogs can pull on this and I don't have to worry about it. And this goes all the way down to the seat so that way they can truly lay down and have enough room. But then I don't have to worry about them jumping out the window or anything like that. The other thing is, is this also is really good for a tether point. I've um, put this through grocery bags and hooked this up so that way things aren't blowing around or anything like that in the back as well. Something else that I like having for the dogs is this cloth little water bowl. And what I like about this is it's small, it's compact. It fits in the back seat really easily. But then after we go out hiking with the dogs and they're done using it, instead of having this all wet inside the truck, I just put a little carabiner here on the end of it and I snap that into one of the tie-in hooks on the back of the truck inside the bed. At home I can throw this back into the truck and I don't have to worry about mildew or rot or anything like that. And this is held up pretty well too. We've had this for four or five years as well and I think it came as a two-pack. All the stuff that I'm showing here today in the video, if I have any links for them, they'll be down below in the description so don't forget to check that out. So I'm going to unhook this so that way we can kind of see here in the back a little bit. Um, I have trails and hiking books and maps and things like that. I always think it's a good idea to have maps of your local area with you because you never know whether or not you're going to actually have um, a GPS with you. And even if you do, whether you do or don't have, uh, most of us have GPS on our phone. So that doesn't mean you're going to have cell service or anything like that either. So it's good to always have a backup plan. Something else uh, we keep in here is um, shout out to our uh, local stores and things like that. Uh, Big R is kind of like our um, Tractor Supply Co. back east, uh, where I'm from originally. But here in Colorado, they have um, Big R, and um, they have these little um, trial tasters for uh, dog food, usually. And um, we will stick uh, one for each dog in here, just in case we did have the dogs and we got stuck or stranded or something like that. We have enough food for them. Now, one thing I did say is that I do not have a truck gun. However, I do believe in having extra ammo. So one thing that I do, because the weather can have a huge effect on your ammunition, whether it's too hot or too cold. And here in Colorado, even just a few weeks ago, we went from 30 degrees and snowing to 75 degrees in less than 24 hours. So something that I do to combat fluctuating temperatures is that I just have a good old fashioned lunchbox that's got the thermal insulation stuff so that way I can keep my ammo in here it stays in the truck it keeps all of this 
uh, compact and all in the same place and it gives it a little bit of temperature gradient stability. Like I said, I'm not going to go through everything, but of course I've got an axe in here, I've got a come along, I've got ratchet straps, I've got straps for towing and rescue equipment and things like that. I wouldn't say that I'm very big into off-roading as in like rock crawling. I do like to get off-road, trust me, if the truck's not dirty, I'm not happy. That being said, I I definitely hit a lot of dirt trails and things like that. And then also here, uh, if anyone is familiar with uh, Snowmageddon that happened uh, two, three years ago, this truck, completely stock, did get me home in that. And that was driving through some three foot deep drifts. Uh, it can kind of get crazy out here. So quite pleased with my truck. I have no complaints for the truck itself for being stock. The only upgrade I think I'm planning on doing at any time is putting on some tires that are a little bit more of off-road with a little bit more tread and knobby but other than that i am quite pleased with how this truck functions stock as is now forgive my um, camera work here this is a uh, freehand however another thing that i did is i got an old-fashioned uh, you can get these from military surplus and i'll have a link below for one of these as well but this is an old-fashioned haversack that i was able to loop through on this side and what i like is that they have these clips that you can actually unhook, throw it around your headrest and back down and this can hang here and that's for some extra storage and some space and if you do want to use this as kind of like a miniature get home bag then that also works out because then you can unhook it and use it as a backpack as well. Alright I think that'll do it for me. It's getting pretty hot here in the garage and uh, yeah. <laughs> Again this isn't everything that's in my truck. I've got recovery gear in here. I have um, straps, come alongs, um, ratchet straps. I've got food, water, uh, toilet paper, things like that. Uh, my background is search and rescue, so I have a lot of things that pertain to that because of that's my background, that's who I am. I do plan on doing a more in-depth video of what I think everyone should have in their vehicle uh, because my wife isn't going to have the kind of recovery gear and things like that in her car like I do, but I have her set up with basic survival stuff. So I'll be doing a video of her um, car gear at some point here hopefully uh, in the future as always links for the majority of the stuff that you're going to see in this video are going to be down below in the description uh, please feel free to check those out again those are affiliate links as always for that and uh, whenever it comes to that haversack i have back here so i live in colorado now i grew up in pennsylvania and colorado actually has a decent uh in a bad way number of homeless population that live here in colorado being down here in the springs it's not as bad as it is up in denver but it is something that's out there now that's something that strikes a chord with me personally i did spend some time in my youth homeless um, and by that i mean i either lived out of my car or um, at the ambulance hall barracks i kind of that's whenever i was going to get a shower and stuff like that but i did spend some time uh, before getting started with college and things uh, homeless more or less again I had my car, so not completely homeless, but you get the drift. So because of that, that's something that strikes a chord with me personally. So that haversack that I have hanging from the seat, I actually have pre-done up kits because giving homeless folks money, that's something that's not extremely helpful. And it seems like, oh yeah, it was a last minute thought process. I do pre-made kits that has a bottle of water in here so that way they can reuse the bottle if they need to. Uh, some protein, so I've got um, some beef jerky in here and then a um, granola bar and then also because of living in Colorado um, I throw a hot hands pack in there and I put all this in a heavy duty freezer ziplock so that way they can reuse the bag as well too. This to me if I was homeless and someone handed this to me I would be more inclined to say oh thank you you're trying to set me up for success rather than someone handing me cash going like oh you just felt bad and whatever. So, and because I've walked that, I feel like this is more respectful than here's cash. But anyhow, that's just me. Um, feel free to disagree, I guess. All right, all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, it's Chris Mack.